Hey, this is math 8 unit 4 lesson 12 continued because again this one got cut off a little bit like a couple other lessons did and a couple more to come so here we go just wrapping up for you starting with number three which is where our video stopped at before it says Andre is in charge of cooking broccoli and zucchini for a large group he has to spend all $17 he has and carry 10 pounds of veggies zucchini costs $1.50 per pound broccoli costs two dollars per pound okay great one graph shows a combination of zucchini and broccoli that weighs 10 pounds, and the other shows combinations of broccoli and zucchini that cost $17. So we're looking at some zucchini, we're looking at some broccoli, we know we have to spend $17. We also know we're looking to have a total of 10 pounds when those are all put together there. So let's take a look at our graph and see what we have here. Here we have a graph. We have two lines happening right there which you know you may not be able to quite tell what those different lines mean so I'm going to just highlight them out for you here um, on this first line we'll call this the yellow line here we see that it goes all the way down to the number 10 notice that it gets to 10 which tells me and getting back in the direction said so there was one graph that showed you which one had the combinations that added to 10 pounds so this is our 10 what I would call our 10 pound line it's a 10 pound line because if you look around there if I have 10 pounds of zucchini I can have zero broccoli to have 10 pounds if I find another point like right here if I have nine pounds of zucchini I would have one pound of broccoli so every time I find a point here eight and two they add up to be a total of 10 pounds that's my 10 pound line the other line is this one here and they describe that as being the place where the price per pound combination adds up to be the $17. So that's my $17 per pound line. Okay, per pound line. And that's what I have there. So the first one says, question on this one says, name one combination of veggies that weighs, t weighs 10 pounds but does not cost $17. So it's gonna be on the yellow line, looking for one that's on the yellow, but not the pink line. So we could say, like our first point here, we could say we could have nine zucchini and one broccoli. That would be a combination where you have 10 vegetables, but it doesn't cost $17. Doesn't work out that way. Okay, are there others? Sure. Any point along here would work. That is a point there, right? If it's on the yellow line, but not crossing the pink, it's gonna work. So there are actually several different choices here. There are one, two, three, four, five different choices on that line. Or you could even do just 10, 10 uh, zucchini and no broccoli. Is that really a good combination? Probably not. All right, but those are options you could use. Okay, a combination of veggies that cost $17, but does not weigh 10 pounds. This means, in this case here, it's on the pink, but not the yellow. So we could look here, and we could just go simply with there. There's one. We could have 10 pounds of, of zucchini and one pound of broccoli and that's going to be 11 pounds but it doesn't it weighs too much but it, the cost would be 17 dollars so the cost works but it doesn't isn't uh isn't the right um the sorry the right number of pounds right too many pounds so what we're looking for though is how many pounds of uh each of zucchini and broccoli can andre eat get so that he spends all 17 and gets 10 pounds well that's going to take place at our point of intersection or our solution to the equation there. And that takes place at six comma four, right? That's our six and our four. And so we would say that the combination that would work best for him to spend all $17 and have a combination is at that solution, or what we call the intersection, which is at six comma four. And six is gonna be for the zucchini and the four is for the broccoli. All right, all right, number four. Number four, it says the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is related to temperature in degrees Celsius by the equation F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. If the Sahara Desert temperatures often reach 50 degrees Celsius, how many degrees Fahrenheit is this? So we're gonna use that equation and we're gonna plug these things in. So in this case here, we have a degree Celsius which is gonna go right there where the C is at. And we're solving for Fahrenheit. So the equation would look something like this. We would say that F 
equals 9 fifths times Celsius, which is 50, plus 32. That's our equation we're going to solve. So first thing I can do is reduce here. 5 goes into 50 10 times. I can multiply here. 9 times 10 is 90. So this is equal to 90 plus 32. And 90 plus 32 is going to be Fahrenheit equals. The combination 90 plus 32 is 122. So how many degrees is 50 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? It's 122 degrees. Next one, the opposite way. In parts of Alaska, temperature can reach negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure you notice that negative sign right there. How many degrees Celsius is this? So in this case, our, our setup, because we're going to plug this into the F part, would be negative 60 equals 9 fifths Celsius plus 32. The first step I would take would be to subtract 32 from both sides. So negative 60 and minus a negative 32 or 32 is going to be a total of minus 92. Okay, is going to equal 9 fifths C. Let's write that over here for us to see a little better. So negative 92 equals 9 fifths C. 9 fifths C. Now to get the 9 fifths away from that one right there. Um, what I want to do is multiply um, both sides by the reciprocal by 5 ninths. Multiply this by 5 ninths. So that goes away. So we're looking at 5 ninths times a negative 92. All right, that's not a very nice one, I know. So that's okay. It's going to solve for C, though. 5 times negative 92 is negative 460. And our denominator is still a 9. I use my calculator in this one here to figure out what that's going to be. And so negative 460 divided by 9 comes up to be negative 51.1. And that was the solution that I got when I used a calculator for that one there. And finally, our last one here. There is one temperature where the degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius are the same. So that C equals F. You use expression from the equation where F is expressed in terms of C to solve. Okay, so what does that mean? It means this. It means you take your, your equation, F equals 9 fifths Celsius plus 32, and we don't want to have two variables. We're going to have a C right here. Okay, we're going to set equal to C, but not just C by itself. We'll make it, you know, it's 1 C, but because we're playing with some fractions here, um, a little shortcut I'm going to use is I'm going to call this 5 fifths C. Now the reason I'm going to call that 5 fifths C is so that I can start moving some things around a little bit better. What is 5 over 5? It's 1. Okay, so that's just plain old 1. But now I can subtract 5 fifths C from both sides. And notice that when I do that, not only does this go away, but 9 fifths minus 5 fifths is a little easier to figure out. That gets you down to 4 fifths C. Okay? Now that's equal to right now nothing, so let's go ahead and subtract 32 from both sides. Subtract 32. So negative 32 equals 4 fifths C. You see how we did that there? We replaced the F with C, just because that's what we're doing. We're saying it's going to be in terms of C. And then we made it 5 fifths to make sure that it was 1 C still, but using a fraction to help us subtract things a little better. We could have just subtracted 9 fifths C minus 1c, and we'd still end up in the same place. We'd have to find a common denominator for 1, you get 5 over 5, and then went, there we are. So, from here, let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal. 4 fifths becomes 5 fourths, so 5 fourths. Okay, so that goes away, so it's equal to c. 4 goes into 32 8 times, but don't forget that negative. There's still a negative 8, and 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. All right, and that's it for number four and for the homework today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.